This is a character design exercise in which I am improvising both the role of the interviewer and the role of the creature being interviewed. Characters with the most likes and views will be animated and made into a lo-fi album. What is your name? Alexandria. What kind of being are you? I am a giantess. I have a long braid. How tall are you? I am 126 feet tall. Where do you live? I live in a cave in the mountains. More of a gorge. I like to hunt and fish. Well, <clears throat> the gorge, it's hard to explain exactly. There's a lot of um, different formations that lend itself to different needs. Like there is a sleeping area that has a an outcropping that serves as a roof, and then there's areas that you know there's a stream that passes through it. So this attracts different animals, and you know there's an area that pools into a lake and so it's hard to say when my home begins and where it ends it's um where the gorge begins and ends you know it tapers away on either end and um yeah i like i like um, fishing and i like hunting and I like to look at the sky. I like to lay in the river, in the stream, with um, with my head going upstream. And I'm just laying on my back and I let the water rush past me. And it's sort of absurd when creatures are swimming and crash into me. It doesn't happen too much, but sometimes... Fish are passing from the lake up above down through the the river and they hit me and I don't react because why would I? It didn't really hurt that much and I'm not grossed out, it's just a fish. How do you make the things that you need? Clothing, yeah, I don't have a lot of patience for that to make it. I usually um, will find some discarded tarps, canvas. I wear a lot of canvas and I do a, a quick stitch to make it wearable. Sort of a vi variety of different things. I like that as something wears out, I can make something new to whatever I fancy at the time. I'm not going to make anything too complex, but I might put a hole in the middle for my head that, and then Put that over me it's a square and i just sew it up the sides make a shirt and i prefer shorts so i'll just make up cut a little pattern out usually with a sharp rock i like to sharpen the rocks make them like knives you know a human knife is too small for me i have to make everything myself yeah i i you know cut the pattern and just a really quick stitch. I don't spend too much time on it. And I sew it up if it's, you know, it's damaged or something. Um, I do like when there's a bunch of paint on it. That seems kind of unique, but uh, I don't like that it stinks. I have a tarp that goes across my sleeping area, like a door. Kind of keeps the weather out and helps me fall asleep. I don't like having too much information to look at. I like it's simple, I like it minimal. Where did your name come from? My mother likes to read. She didn't come by a lot of books, but she came by a lot of uh, newspaper. How did she learn to read? So she just happened to, um, you know, learn over time. Um, she had the time. She also was, um, oh yeah, she was psychic. You know, so she came ac across someone who was reading. She didn't even have to be too close. Just someone reading out 
um, on the mountain hiking. She could kind of tap into that and sort of copy that mental pattern. Yeah, she was a really talented lady. She could perceive things from the inside out, and she could learn to read from the inside of people. Do you have that too? Can you do that? I am I'm not interested. I don't want to be near people that much. I protect this forest. The humans can walk through it, but I'm, what do they call it? Severe? No, disciplined. You know, if they, if they, you know, uh, if they disturb the area in any way, they'll feel a haunting presence. And <clears throat> I'm really not interested in modernity, of uh, human modernity, because it has this connection to pollution, like, and encroachment of the settlements. This is not such a problem when my mother was alive, but now it's gotten really bad in the last few decades. This planet has become the uglier for it, and I'm, I disapprove. I disapprove. I am very disappointed, but there's not much I can do. It is a part of nature, just like everything else in the universe. I just don't, I just hope I don't have to deal with it in the future. Like I might have to recede back into the, into the colder mountains and find colder and colder, more isolated mountains. I really rather not. I really rather not. It's already cold enough. Do you feel um, hot and cold the same way a human does? Pretty much, yes. Yeah. I mean, my skin is a lot tougher. It's more, it's like whale skin. It's a lot thicker. It's a lot more, um, it will forever maintain its youthful collagen, all of that, everything that maintains insulation, buoyancy, always will, at least in my genes, will always be there. Very hardy, a very hardy people. Do you have, do you have friends? Do you have other family members? Well, yeah, there's other family members. They live on different mountain, mountain sides, different gorges. Sometimes we have a reunion, usually revolving around solar eclipses. And yeah, I enjoy their company, but it is very difficult for giants to live together long term. We're just too, we're just too big. We become a bit clumsy having to clamor over each other to go hunting and things like that. It just takes a lot more coordination of our movements, of our actions to maintain the forest. We will knock over f f trees if we're not careful, if we're not paying attention, if we're not super vigilant. So having another person there, another giant, just makes things more distracting, more claustrophobic. We have to share the best, you know, sleeping areas and things like that. It's always a compromise. So might as well just find the best, find the best on different mountains and not have to deal with that kind of territorialism. We're very territorial. And it, so it's best to just not activate those feelings. We keep a good distance, but we do like reunions. We're all good friends. And um, do you have friends from of different species? Oh, yep, yes. We, um, there are different spirits for sure that go through this area. I definitely am grumpy towards them if I haven't met them, but there's Lady of the Forest, who I've known for many centuries. She is a, a guardian, and we, we guard the forest in a similar way, or similar intentions. We're harmonious, and she'll sometimes um, go up the stream, up the gorge, very silently. She has something to do. She is treating the water with something or just i mean nothing chemical or something that humans might treat something with but treat it with a certain intention oh there's some like maybe gobliny fellows i don't know if they're exactly goblins 
you know, maybe they're pixies. They're just gray beings that can, you know, they might walk on all fours, the Ortrabus. And then there's um, the frogs. I'm not really friends with beings that I will eat, like the fish or the deer. I have those boundaries where I'm not going to befriend them because the conflict of interest, I need to eat. But for the animals that I don't eat, like frogs and things like that, we have a friendship. We have a fondness. There's a few frogs that I recognize. How old are you now? Well, well, my mother was 20,000 years, and I'm... Everything is proportional, so I have to convert it into your years. 1,200 years old. Yeah. Oh, and the tree spirits, you know, they're still just a fraction of our age, but it's a little closer, so the tree spirits, the dryads, and the giants usually have a close relationship. Age expectancy is really important in close friendships when 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 making when when striking close friendships with um other people in the realm with other beings because there's some something unfair about making friends with a being who just won't last that long it's saddening and also there's a camaraderie and seeing the same changes over the centuries. It's almost necessary to feel a certain um, fraternity or sorority with such beings. A closeness you feel with someone who has seen the, the ebbs and flows of, of one's, one's environment, one's ecosystem. What kind of feelings do you have on a daily basis? Sort of like a, well, my negative feelings tend to be a, a certain dissatisfaction, frustration. And then when I'm happy or in a better mood, a good mood, I wouldn't say that there's euphoria or brightness or anything like that, but there's a contentedness. And so my scale of feeling kind of goes between discontent and content. There's not a lot of movement in my system. It's a it's like a pressure-based constitution. I'm most sensitive and most affected by changes in pressure. Heat-wise, I stay pretty warm. Even when it's snowing, I am I can melt the snow. So I don't have an issue with it. Just always warm. Not so overheated though. I feel like my system's good at casting off heat in the summer. It generates a lot of heat and it casts off a lot of heat. As long as I'm, you know, getting enough, as long as I'm getting enough to sustain, sustain myself, sustain body heat, there's no, no, not too much of an issue. But I do enjoy the, the winters a bit more, even though it is a bit harsher. In the winters and being further in the mountains, there's just it can be more difficult to hunt. Things tend to be sharper, so I might get more cuts. But heat wise, I do enjoy it. I enjoy it much more in the summer. Is there anything else you'd like to say? Well, other than just the general eco awareness, you know, don't. I leave garbage. You know, I'm not a troll. I'm more of like an ogre. Anyway, trolls, they tend, ah, trolls I've known, they, they have a tendency to enjoy a little more chaos, but I really don't. I want the natural order of things as far as nature, growing nature, developing naturally, just Humans just like to leave their trash in places. They like to build things up. They like to damage the nature. Just tired of cleaning up after them. As someone, I'm not going to just leave it there. I'm going to go and I'm going to clean it. And I hate doing that. 
not because they don't enjoy maintaining the environment, but because it makes me feel so unsafe to have <sighs> beings on this planet and sharing this planet with beings, regard for others, no regard for the beauty of the environment. Who wants to walk into an area that has been damaged with plastic? And I really cannot dispose of this plastic. I don't have a trash can. I don't have any... I don't know what you do with your plastic, but you need to take it away. Take it away, I don't want to see it. It doesn't do anything. It does not help the soil. It leaches things into the soil. I can smell it. It stinks. It takes so long for it to decompose. I don't even know where that is. I don't know what it is. Take it away. Oh, I hate touching it too. It's vile. Anyway, um, getting emotional there. Um, I hope that. I hope uh, that everyone is happy and peaceful and enjoying their. Thank you for speaking with us. I really appreciate what you had to say and share about your life and share about the environment. Oh yes, no problem.